equation four deals with sequence, and this is one of my uh, favorite topic in math. We have seen two different types of sequence, and as a review, let's talk about what are the things that we need to know. Okay, so as a note, we need to know um, the first type, the arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence. And what is an arithmetic sequence? This is the case that when you keep adding um, a same number over and over, keep adding a same number over and over, the same number. And that's called a common difference. Okay? Keep adding the same number over and over, that's called the arithmetic sequence. And that number can be negative. In that case, it becomes subtraction. So that's why I just write keep adding a same number. And one of the things that we need to know for arithmetic sequence, we have two things. The first is know how to find the nth term. Okay? And that's given by the formula that a n, this is the nth term. That's equal to a1, that's the first term, plus parentheses n minus 1, whichever the n that you want. n, n, n can be 200, n can be um, 372. Things like that. Any a number for n that you want times d. And d is that same number, the common difference. Okay? And then we also need to know how to find the sum of the uh, first n terms. So maybe uh, I have a total of 20 terms and I want to find out what's the sum of all that terms, all that numbers. In that case, what we can do is use this formula that Sn is equal to n over 2 times a1, the first term, plus the last term, which is uh, denoted by a n in this case. Okay, and then there's another case, another sequence, that's called a geometric, geometric sequence. And that's the case when you keep uh, multiplying Keep multiplying a same number. And as you have said this, that same number in this case is called a common ratio. Common ratio. And the common ratio can be negative, it can be a fraction, it can be a decimal, things like that. And earlier, the same number, when you keep adding it, this is called the common difference. And that's why we use D right here. And then for this case, we are going to use R. And we still need to know how to find the nth term. Okay, so nth term of the geometry sequence is given by the formula a n is equal to a1 times R, which is the common ratio, raised to the n minus 1 power. And then we also have the sum formula, sum of the first n terms. First, n terms. And that's given by the formula that Sn is equal to um, a1 times r raised to the n power minus 1. And the minus 1 in this case is not to the exponent. But this minus 1 was to the exponent. Okay? Parentheses. Over r minus 1. And these two are just a regular subtract 1. They are not in the exponents, but again, this n minus one, this entire things are in the exponents. Okay, so with this, we are in business. We can do number four. We can get to work with number four. So number four, let's look at the question again. For the sequence three comma seven, so the first one is three, the next one is seven, and then the next one is eleven, and then so on. So we have. 3, 7, 11. And let's uh, just let me ask you how do we get from 3 to 7? And how do we get from 7 to 11? And what you can do is first try to think about if you are adding the same number over and over, or maybe you are multiplying the same number over and over. And in this case, um, it looks like 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, right? 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. And then 7 plus Another 4 will get you the 11. And then so on. So the next one, following this pattern, if you add 4, 
the next number will be 15. And the next number, if you add another 4, uh, you will get 19, and so on. So that's the sequence that we're dealing with, where a n is equal to 3. And in this case, d is equal to 4. The common difference is equal to a positive 4. The question is asking us to find the 20th term. Okay, that's part A. We need to find the 20th term. So let's do that. So part A. So find the 20th term. We need to know A20. Okay, and A20, we can use the formula right here. An is equal to A1 plus N minus 1 times D. So we need to know what A20 is. We'll just say, use the formula. An is equal to A1 plus N minus 1 times D. And we know A1 is equal to 3. And we know N is going to be 20. And D is equal to 4. And we can just do the calculation. So we have A. And let me switch the color. A20. This is equal to A1 is equal to 3 plus parentheses n is equal to 20 minus 1 times d d is the 4 the common difference is the 4 so let me make a note d is equal to 4 common difference is equal to 4 so with this we can just uh, do the calculation so this is equal to 3 plus that's equal to 19 times 4 and you can put parentheses, doesn't really matter. And that's equal to 3 plus, that should be 76. So, that's equal to 79. So, A20, it's equal to 79. And then, for part B, the question is asking us to find um, the sum of the first 20th term, which is going to be note S20. In that case, we are going to use the formula that S n is equal to n over 2 times a1 plus a n where in this case n is equal to 20 okay so we can just do the work uh, s n is 20 that's equal to n is 20 over 2 times a1 is equal to 3 right a1 is equal to 3 plus I need to have a20 Right, we need to have a20, and that's exactly what we got for part um, part a, which is 79. Parentheses, and let me make a note. This is a20. Okay, so uh, 3 plus 79 is 82. Right, this is 82, and then 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. So s20 should be a20. Yeah, this 20 should be A20. And that's the answer to part B. The sum and the 20th term. Okay? And again, these are the things that you need to know for the final. These are the things that you need to know about arithmetic sequence and geometry sequence. However, for geometry sequence, there's another uh, formula that happened this day here. And that's a special case. Okay? And that's the infinite sum case. Infinite sum. And usually, I can denote that by S with the infinity. Okay? Infinite sum works, and the formula is A1 over 1 minus R. It works under the condition that if the absolute value of R is strictly less than 1. So if R is equal to 1 half, or R is equal to a negative 1 third, or even negative 2 thirds, then we can find the infinite sum. So that means that if you add all the terms, so infinitely many terms, then this is the result, okay? So this is more like a special case. But I think you should also need you should also know this. So let me just put like a special box right here. Okay, I don't want to exclude this. And here, here you have it. Alright.